Morning. Morning, Richard. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Morning, or afternoon. Viewers. Morning, viewers. Evening, night. Whenever, whatever yeah. time of day you're choosing to join us, welcome, bloody welcome, and thank you for your support from the bottom of our hearts. I mean, it is awards season. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Uh, the uh, BAFTAs. Oh, dear. Anyway. We'll talk about things like that. Will we? I'll mention it's the It's not on the list. Oh. Oh, I've got a runny nose now. We've always got to remember that actors are actors. You're a bit of an actor, aren't you, Richard? No. Yes, you are. No. Yeah. No, I did yeah. do drama. I did you do did drama. You did do drama, yeah. So I you know how to be a drama queen. I do have a little bit of talent. Smidged in there somewhere. Yeah. My Later. talent. Yeah, we were zero. talking about me. <laughs> yeah. You see, that that is an actor. Oh, Throughout all our lives, all my life, working with with actors in West End and Broadway and blah 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 blah. Yeah, it's all about them. It really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the show won't go on. Will it, Paul? No, it won't. Would you Richard. like to do Sunday chat? All Sunday on, chat. All on your own, Paul. No, I wouldn't. No, exactly. I wouldn't bother. No, I wouldn't bother. No. I wouldn't bother. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't no, 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 I wouldn't. No, well, no, no you good, lead it. it. You I, lead it I perfectly. Said, if I said I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. Does my face look bothered? <laughs> I'm <a> bothered. <laughs> Anyway, oh. God, it's chaos already. Oh, oh chaos already on this cold and frosty morning. There we are. I don't it, know why I did that voice. No, though, I don't know. Where did that come from? Cold and frosty morning. That was sort of a bit Kermitish, wasn't it, really? Kermit, Kermit. No, that's not Kermit. I think you've, you've gone no, into I've Al broken. Jolson. I've broken. Yeah. It is a cold and frosty morning here. Well, the it was. Frosty, frosty tits and robins flying around, trying to fly in the cold weather. Poor little birds. No, I feel sorry for the birds. They must be in shock. Mustn't they? So one of them are all fallen out of the trees. Well, yeah. I mean, it does amaze me. They're such little things. When you look at wrens, you, you know, which is just freeze. tiny. Mm. You know, it's mad. You yeah. think they just freeze solid. Mm. I read this morning about alligators that they basically can almost freeze solid. Well, frogs and, then, and toads, absolutely, the yeah. same thing. They've got inbuilt antifreeze, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> None of that was on the list. No. So, we usually kick off with, hi, welcome, thank you. We just want to say thank you, bloody thank you, for supporting us on all of our platforms. Welcome to new subscribers who've recently joined us. Mm. We do hope you're enjoying the content. Yeah, we do hope you watch again. You watch know. again. Because again, again, it goes back to that thing of subscriber numbers and views are so sort of, you know, they don't, There's disparate. no correlation, yeah, is there? absolutely. Yeah. There's no correlation. No. There are some channels that have got loads of subscribers yet don't get that many views. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got a few subscribers and we get a, a really views. nice nice amount of views. We're pleased. We are. It's not nice. It's different, unusual. <laughs> um, oh, I think we're going to have to watch Kath and Kim again. We oh, haven't watched it for about are. a year. That's right. <laughs> it's not. Baby cheeses. Baby cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's just uh, move on. So yeah. thank you and thank you to all of you. Yeah, you've done that. From... The bottom, the all, you've done that, yeah. I'm just doing it in to reinforce it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to make sure the message hit home. Yeah. Sunday Jack! Yeah. That was just in case people thought they were watching so something else. So for those else. of you who... You talked over me then? Yeah, well, I mean, you yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are new, we normally kick off with Richard and Paul's weather report. Some channels would insert a green screen at this point and point to clouds and things, but we can't be arsed because of my CBA syndrome. Yeah. Can't be arsed. Yeah. We'd just like to talk about the weather because we're British. I and feel it in British. my fingers. I feel it in my toes. You can't say that, Paul. 
I can't sing it. Copyright. I can't sing it. So weather. It's wet, wet, wet. Very wet. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, there oh, we are. Oh, Paul, yeah. you're too clever for your own good. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, dear. Yes, so it's been very, very wet. Very wet. I got really wet the other day. I know, I just got one. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so you got really wet. Yeah, even though I had an umbrella and a raincoat oh, on. Dear. The rain yeah. was coming at me. Yeah. Under the umbrella. Maybe, maybe you were attracting it. Maybe, maybe your sheer beauty and youthfulness was attracting the raindrops. They were thinking, let's moisturise that natural face so perfectly with our own gorgeous natural water. Oh, thank you, Paul. Yeah, maybe it's doing that. So, yeah, but now it's kind of changed. It's gone really, really cold because it was nice and warm, oh, wasn't yeah. it? It was well, lovely and mild and warm and it felt as though spring was here. And now Richard Watts are heating on 24 hours a day. Now it's cold. Yeah. Cold. We had a fire last night, mm. Mm. which was delicious, mm. I have to say. Deliciously warm. And Not that he ate it. You can't eat fire. Shh, so, shh, no. No. Well, I have Warning. eaten fire. Warning. Uh, well, you have eaten excuse fire. Excuse me. You you I know. have eaten fire. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I no, did it. No, I no. did it many years ago. I even did the whole thing where you take a mouthful of um, fuel and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to go <laughs> like that. <laughs> Very hard. Or else it covers your face in fire. Yeah. 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 Don't want that. I've done it. Like that. I did it. Yeah. At a medieval banquet. Peckerton Castle, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Peckerton Castle. Yeah, many, many years ago when I worked for a Dungeons and Dragons role playing society mm -hmm. in a castle. What role were you playing? I worked in the office. So you weren't role playing? No, I booked what were called the, the dungeons, which were the games. I, I was on the phone. On the dog and bone, you know. Dog and bone. Doing yeah. the bookings. That's yeah. right. So, anyway, yes. Yeah, it's been very wet. In fact, on Thursday, I think it rained for virtually... The whole day. 20 hours, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And when I was at the plot yesterday, the site is just sodden. It really, it really is. The whole allotment site... You can feel the sort of squelchiness under your feet. Oh, However, my growing beds were all absolutely fine. Squelch. That's, yeah. I do like that word, squelch. Yeah, we're having a little bit of hey. vanilla fielding this morning mm, as well. Squelch. <laughs> oh, Would you mind if I squelch? And have you seen what's come up on your phone just a few minutes ago? No. A weather warning for Sunday to Monday of rain. Again? Yeah. Oh, I think Sunday 3pm. We'll be onwards. squelching. We'll all be squelching. Mm. Ah, so. Move on. Move on now, Paul. It's time to move on. How has the working week been for you, Paul? Uh, it's been busy. Mm. It's been busy. I, I've got, I had a good time at the, the plot earlier in the week and then it's just been sort of full on at my desk or with Vanessa at For Earth's Sake. Mm. So we've got various systems <sighs> with, the, with the till and with scales and things and because of the way it was originally set up, they don't necessarily talk to each other. You need to make sure they do talk to each other. And um, when you chase, change the prices on the till, for things that need to be weighed, you need to change prices on the scales because they're a different system. So I was doing that when I was down there on Thursday, a day of rain. But um, it was good. We just sort of cracked on and did things. And next week is back to a pop-up outside 140 in Cranley on Wednesday and Thursday. So, um, so yeah, that will be so good. So 140 is a shop. 140 <laughs> is a it? lovely shop. Is That's a, the one I've been in. It, it is. is a nice shop, actually. I've not bought anything from them, but it was nice. Everything in there is, is absolutely fabulous. And they've got a lovely cafe upstairs at the back yes we went to the cafe didn't we we had breakfast yes it was lovely it was it was lovely it always is they have great coffee so you can just go in there for a coffee or a tea 
um, and they do breakfast, they do sort of all day breakfast and they, they do fabulous sort of lunches and afternoon teas as well. It's a great place and the, the couple who run it are just lovely, yeah. So we're in front of that shop, they've allowed us to use their forecourt and we set up the vegetables and uh, we take people's bags in on the Wednesday, we fill them on Wednesday evening, afternoon, evening, and then they pick them up from the, the, the pop-up on the Thursday. Works really well, yeah. Oh, excellent, Paul. Mm. Thank you. And we're hoping to reopen the shop in early April at the new premises at Vanessa's Barn. So fingers crossed on that, yeah. How lovely. And then we had, we both had a day off yesterday, didn't we? But we ended up doing lots of things. I mean, it, the, it's extremely rare that we have a day off and don't do anything. I mean, that's very rare. There's always something to do. Well, there's always housework to do or catching up on things to do. Yes, because yeah. you do so much housework, Paul, don't you? I was talking about the two of us. I did bring a, a dirty cup down from upstairs um, earlier this week and I, I put it um, in the dishwasher and I did notice I didn't get any thanks from Richard for doing that. Um, so that's obviously yeah, an anyway. opportunity anyway, for you to do that. So yeah, housework, blah blah blah, da da da. You can see my daily vlogs mm. for more on that. Changing the bed, that's always... It's today, isn't it? You no, it's to, Sunday. It's Sunday that the bed gets changed. I do Sunday. And then change. he comes down with, a, you know, all of the things and, and they, they magically appear back in the cupboard upstairs, which is great. Yeah, all clean. All right now. Mm. It's not funny. Mm. God, honestly. So, in the news this week, what has been in the news this week? It's awards season. The mm. BAFTAs. I have to say I can't stand watching any of those things. The thing that annoys me the most about award ceremonies is it's wealthy people awarding themselves for things they've already been paid to do as a job. Hmm, basically. They've been paid to do it. They've done their job well. They now need an award to validate that. Really? You know, in society, the people that need awarding are the people that do the hard, hard jobs. Mm. The hard jobs. The doctors, the nurses, people who are saving lives. On a daily people basis. People that are making a difference to the people on the street. Not the wealthy performers who are, all, frankly, all overpaid, all of them. I mean, the whole industry, the whole entertainment industry, apart from YouTube, is overpaid. Well, I wouldn't say the whole. I mean, you know, we, oh, we know yeah, various sort of struggling actors and, of... and technicians and all of that. But when you get into a certain area of, of work, it is well paid. Yeah, the higher, the higher bracket where there's silly, silly money, where it's silly money. But that's the same in anything, you know, like bankers, you know, you've got all of those people who are actually doing the work at the bottom, and then people who, who you know, trot in and, and make several billion from betting against currencies and things like that, they walk away with bonuses of, of 500 million and things. Yeah, you I know, mean, the, dis ludicrous. the distribution of wealth is just crazy and getting worse just ridiculous but we're not mm. going to get too political no. so yes i would yeah yeah but yeah. people don't come here for them no Paul. they don't it's not richard and paul's politic hotline yeah. is it no, no it's not no. no i don't want to do that maybe i should have a my own show paul's political policing where I actually sort of police the politics. Yeah, Maybe I think I that's could already do that. being done by yeah, Carol most Vorderman, the... isn't it, really? Yeah, I don't really watch Carol Vorderman. You do, don't you? I do. I like Carol. I like Carol. Yeah. I like. She's fighting for things which I like. Blah, blah, but blah. But again, she's in a privileged position to be able to do that, hasn't she? She's, she's obviously 
been very successful in her life. She's worked very hard. I'm, I'm sure she has worked very hard. Yeah, but and she's, she's now in a position where she can do things. Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? Not everybody in entertainment uses their position to do that kind of work. No. So no. I admire the ones that do, you know. Oh, absolutely. Um, but then you see these, you know, big stars and... They're in these huge mansions, which you think, how much does it cost to heat that? How much fossil fuel are you using to heat that space? How much space does somebody need well, in it, life? It goes back to what we were saying several years ago when Robbie Williams, from you know who was in Take That originally, said that he was now homeless because he'd, he'd given up all his homes and he had nowhere to live. You know, there's a bit difference between homelessness of a person who's got millions in the bank and homelessness of somebody who has got a broken life. You know, they're very, very different. Who's got to go to the homeless person's unit at the local council to try yeah. and get a bed and breakfast. Yeah, yeah. You know. Or to a soup kitchen because they're, they're sleeping on the streets, you know. So, yeah, yeah great differences. People, people that use their position and their wealth to do great good in society, yeah, all is forgiven. But well, the... is it really? Because, of course, the thing is, many of these people, they, they, they avoid, in one way, paying taxes, and then they choose how to spend their money. Do you know what I mean? So they, instead of taxes being used for the benefit of the whole society, they sort of hive their, their money off and they, they pay much reduced taxes, which doesn't help society, and then they decide how they're going to spend that money to benefit society. And very often it's a, you know, I mean, I, th I think very much like, you know, Bill Gates, all of that, it's, it's, it's how they wish to spend their money and to be seen rather than whether it benefits the whole of society. No, but I'm talking about, you know, there, there are several sort of high profile actors who do campaigns, yeah. who go out to visit those regions of the world to see what's going on, that actually take part in those things, yeah. you know, rather yeah. than just being a face yeah. um, of a campaign, <clears throat> you know. Um, it's those people that at least are doing some good, you know. Mm. But there are some people that you just think, nah. And of course there are so many people who work in, in local communities, wider communities, in sort of real sort of charities that do great work, that, that get no recognition whatsoever. Um, anyway, there we are, yes. Yeah, and it's those people who should be awarded. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So, in other news this week, there was an exciting story of the recent moon landing. And it's yes. fallen on its side. <laughs> yes. Which was a little bit disappointing because I, I said to you earlier, didn't I, Paul, if I was investing God knows how many millions in a craft that's being sent to send a experiment to the moon and it's fallen on its side... And then it can't carry out the experiments, which I think is maybe untrue. I think it can maybe do what it's meant to be doing, because I think the hatch is on the other side. So fortune has. But do you know what I mean? I mean, basically. all those millions, and they can't get it to stand upright. But you think that when you are sending <laughs> things to to you know rough um, terrains on on different moons and different planets, that you would have something that can manoeuvre itself because, you know, at some point it, it's not going to land correctly. And um, to have a sort of sphere or something that can manoeuvre itself so that it can get into a position to work seems or like that, the sensible thing. That one in, in Interstellar, that big thing that's got like... <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got big yeah. chunky legs and you think yeah. that's not going to manoeuvre anywhere, but it does. Yeah. That's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, I manoeuvre with my chunky legs. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was quite interesting, I thought. And the World War II bomb in Plymouth. Oh, Did yes. You see that? They evacuated 3,000, three 3,500 3, people. Yeah, they had to take it through the streets and then throw it into the sea. Yeah. <laughs> and then kill all the fish. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, then the sound waves travel as well, so that, yeah. Why did they have to do that? Why did they, why did they have to dump everything in the sea? 
I mean, it's like that satellite. It's the easy they option. They said about that satellite coming down. Oh, don't worry. There's no toxic chemicals in it. It's just going to land in the sea, like everything else. Yeah, yeah. But it's. Um, I mean, obviously Plymouth for for for. Well, I think Americans should know. Didn't didn't the boats for for you know America set sail from Plymouth? And then they, when they landed, they called it New Plymouth. New Plymouth. They? I or don't something. know. I yeah. don't know. Port. Um, I don't know an American history. But yeah, you know, it's, it is a it's a port town, so oh, the oh, sea oh. is obviously very near there. Salisbury Plain is also relatively near there, I suppose. So it could have been taken to Salisbury Plain and um, detonated there, which on is where army uh, on army, you know, where military do huge amount of training. Yeah, but it it happens in Guernsey quite a lot. Of course, there's a lot of you know, Guernsey was occupied by the Germans and there's a huge amount of mun munitions still buried in Guernsey. So every now and again... Well, they find them in London. They find them. I know every they find them in London. The garden, but you where somebody's of... been using it as an ornament. <laughs> that does happen. Or a table. <laughs> I think it was used as a table. Somebody put some wood on top of a, a bomb that hadn't um, exploded and used it as a table. We but, were yeah. bombed round here. We were, indeed, A bomb absolutely. Went, was, whatever they call it, dropped. <laughs> I did work Just on a, a book one uh, many years ago where the person had traced all of the... Um, uh, what's the ones bomb that flew sites. over and then dropped? Doodlebugs. Doodlebugs. All the doodlebugs that had, that had taken off from, from yeah. German territory... And where they had landed, and he had actually charted all of that. And that was fascinating. As well. I think maybe that is there that has come from website. the book that I worked on. Thank yes. you, Paul. Mm. Thank you. Also in the news this week, I noticed the BT Tower, famous oh, landmark yeah. in London, is being turned into a hotel, and. Apparently they're going to revive the revolving restaurant. Yeah. Do you remember the revolving restaurant, Paul? Did you I go do. to it? I remember when I was, I think, 10 or 11, the first time I was in London with Mum and Dad, we went and sort of looked at BT Tower, as it was called then. That's I think British it's still Telecom. And, um, the Post Office Tower. The Post Office called, Tower, that's it? right. And it wasn't, the restaurant wasn't open, so we couldn't go, and Dad... Dad, I think, did have a meal there with some of his mates when they came over to see football one year. Um, but when we went, it wasn't open, so we couldn't see it. We couldn't even go, go up and get the view because it's really... I mean, it's, it's very, very tall, you know. It's very tall and it's very sort of, I don't know, spindly looking, isn't it? It is. I... I don't think I would like to go. I had a friend who went and she said she put her bag down in the wrong place and had to wait for it to come back round. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. the the whole top of the tower didn't spin. It was just the sort of floor. So there was a sort of rim to the to the to the circle of the restaurant if you see what I mean. So if you put a bag down there, the floor would sort of move <laughs> and the bag would be back over there. I think they got it the first time. Well, I was just explaining in case people didn't know. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it was £275 million has been paid for the building. I mean... Well, I mean, it's in a good location, isn't it? Well, it is, but as a hotel, I mean, I, I don't really know what's inside it. No, I don't either. I mean, no. you know, is it is it like a big lighthouse, basically? I don't know. Or I'm not sure. Are there I'd lots like of rooms that. and floors? I don't know. No. Anywho, that's it for this week's news. Is it? What about my milk? So trading standards, information. Trading standards and information group have decided that maybe we shouldn't be allowed to call oat milk milk and things like that. But, and this I is being driven been by the dairy already. industry. No, that was about food. That was about meat with the meat industry. Now the dairy industry has got on board and they're trying to stop us using terms like, you know, oat milk. And I just think it's ludicrous because at the end of the day, whether, 
whether they call that, you know, oat milk, oat milk or not, I'm going to call it oat milk. I'm not going to call it oat to drink. Would you like some oat drink in your tea? I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say oat milk. But what is the, this? Is, this is only on food products then? It's on food products. Because you've got things products. like cleansing milk. And yeah. Body milk. Yeah, this is about food products. Right. Yeah. And it's like cheese that that you won't be able to call a vegan, a vegan cheese. cheese, cheese with a Z, you know, that that should be outlawed. And also for milk, that you shouldn't be able to say that it's not milk. Well, which is odd. What about things like cheese and onion crisps, if they haven't actually got any cheese in them? Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. They're, they're saying that so much packaging would need to change. Cheese and onion flavoured. Cheese and onion flavoured, flavored, yeah. It's the word flavoured, isn't mm, it? Yeah. So you could call them cheese flavoured. Well, no, they're saying this is this is the thing. They're saying that if it's not actually including dairy items, you shouldn't even be able to refer to milk or cheese or curds or anything like that. So I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah. Couldn't be called. I can't believe it's not butter. No, it because couldn't. Because it's not butter. It's been around in the UK for 35 years, I believe. Has it? Oh. And this, if this law goes through, which is sort of, they're discussing the guidance at the moment, but they would need to change the name, I can't believe it's not butter, to... I can't believe it's not butter flavoured spread. Yeah, but they wouldn't be able to use the word butter in their title whatsoever. Well, they could put, I can't believe it's not B... No, star, star, no, star, 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 that's, star. that's what they're saying. That, so for milk, where, you know, very often, um, or sometimes, oat milk, people will use M asterisk LK or M, you know, apostrophe LK or something. And they're saying that that should be banned as well. <sighs> and this is the dairy industry sort of wanting to do this. Yeah, because, you know. I guess, because people are, are having less dairy. Yeah, it's... So they're, fa they're a failing industry now, which, you know, I mean, really... Times are moving on. Yeah, you know. times are changing. In, in years to come, I can tell you now... Are you going to tell us now? I can tell you now that it, people will look back and be dismayed that we ever eight animal products yeah yeah i think they will i think that will be i mean we we still eat cheese you know we do. we do still eat cheese i don't think i could live without cheese but i i think if the dairy industry got its way then actually what they should have to say is instead of calling milk milk like cow's milk milk they should have to call it baby cow growth juice baby cow growth juice or cow breast milk can you imagine sort of, you know, going to your, your, you know, dairy in the supermarket cow and getting breast cow juice. breast juice or cow breast milk? Cow breast milk, juice. You know. Because actually, milk from cows is designed to feed baby cows. It is, yeah. That's it. Mm. Mm. There we are. There we are. But I like cheese. We like cheese. And I like yeah. yoghurt. Yeah, we do like yoghurt. Haven't quite found a, a sort of... a. a a vegan yogurt that really does sort of hit the mark. Hit the mark. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, Paul, it's time to move on. Vegan ice cream, yes. Because mm. we've got shit to do. We do, we do. Yeah, we've got a busy day ahead. We've got more cooking videos to we've do. We've got filming to do. So, Paul, what have we watched on television this week? Plethora of things. We've watched some interesting things as we have, Paul. We have. Wow. We have. We've sort of watched a few different Quite things. Quite cultured yeah. things. So cultured we, education. We watched a programme about the search for Atlantis. Oh, God. Which it was, was... a Channel 5, A Channel it? 5. Bloody Channel 5. Uh, bloody... I nearly said another word then. Channel 5. Why, oh, why, oh, why? Do you insist on having constant, constant, ear-exhausting music playing throughout your documentaries? Yeah, yeah. On several different themes. Jaunty music to begin. Serious music. Sweeping music. Mysterious music. 
all throughout. Constant music in documentaries and things is just tiring. And then they insist on making things more sensational than they are. Yeah, you always have the, is this what we've been looking for for the past 20 years? No. Doubt it. It's not. Doubt it. But we'll have to wait till after the break to find that out, <sighs> won't we? Yeah. Yeah. Just tiring. So it puts you off. It does. Puts me off. It does. And were they saying that Atlantis is Crete? I think that's what they were sort of coming around to. Were they? I can't remember, to be I honest. I think you I fell asleep. It out. Yeah, he fell asleep as well. Yeah. We watched an interesting programme on the Bayer Tapestry which isn't a tapestry, it's an embroidery, mm. but it's called a tapestry. That was interesting, and that actually sparked me off. I had a dream, and I talked about this in my daily vlog. I had a dream about Tudor times. Aww. I was transported to Tudor times, and I was in a, like a bedchamber in a Tudor building, looking out over a Tudor garden, and there was a baby in a box. It wasn't a dead baby, it was fine. But I was expected to look after the baby. Right. And I remember looking around the room thinking, there's no baby lotion. There's no pseudocrem. No nappies. How am, I supposed to, how am I supposed to change the baby's nappy? And it was, the baby was swaddled. Yeah. It was yeah. wrapped. And I had to, I could feel that the baby needed a nappy change. Things you I could felt. feel or you could smell. I could feel. It was mm, damp. And I remember thinking, how do I do this? It's Tudor times. They haven't got anything. I remember thinking, I wonder if they've got any olive oil. <laughs> Maybe I could use olive oil. But they, yeah, I suppose they would have had olive oil. I don't know. Yeah. It was really weird. And it sort of set the tone for the day. Because I was then, in the background, I was obsessed with Tudor things. He was. He was. He was obsessed. I was. Oh, and we also watched, on that, we also watched a um, thing about um, the oh, landscape artist at Hever Castle, which yes. is Tudor. Didn't yes. We? we watched that as and well. And then there was a programme on the National Portrait Gallery, which featured the Tudor period portraits. Mm. <laughs> which was fascination. Or moi. Marvellous. Yeah. Anyway. Have you been to Heath Castle? I can never remember. Yeah, we went. We went together. We did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah I don't really remember that. No. It's, it, when I was with the pop group years and years ago, managing the pop group, we, we lived about 25 minutes from Heath Castle, so we used to go quite regularly. Loved it. Loved Anywho. It. And the gardens there are amazing. Really amazing. We continue with the pottery throwdown. Yeah. Yeah. That's what were they making this week? Oh, a black and white black and sculpture, white sculpture or something. Yeah, with light shining through. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. We watched the movie Lucy, which neither of us had seen. Mm. But we recorded that on the TiVo and watched it. I enjoyed that. I'm surprised you enjoy it because I it was quite it. a. a a violent movie. Yeah, but... With blood. I enjoyed the way it was done. Mm. And it's a Luc Besson film, isn't it? Yeah. And I felt it had shades of Nicholas Rogue. What's Nicholas Rogue? The director, Nicholas oh, Rogue. Oh, Nicholas Rogue, yeah. You know where the scenes of the animals were intercut? Yes, yeah. It reminded me of Walkabout. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. With Jenny Agatha, which is a fantastic movie I mm. love it. it's one of my favorite films um so yeah we also watched the Cotswolds and beyond with Pam Ayres which featured a bit on Toya it did didn't it Toya yeah. Wilcox lovely Toya punk icon um she's got a river at the the bottom of her garden and they went onto the river and she lives in Pershaw in really, Worcestershire the really Worcestershire uh, yeah really long garden I mean, really, really long garden. Beautiful house. Yeah, yeah lovely area. So Absolutely. that was good. We continue with Wonderland Gothic. Uh, we're on part three now. Yeah. And it's sort of progressed into um, talking about gothic movies. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they're going to do gothic music. Possibly. 
Possibly. That that's thing, inspired um, music. That's BBC Four that that was on. Very yeah. interesting series, a little bit deep in places, which I kind of quite like. Yeah, you do. You I like going do. a bit deep. I yeah. do. Yeah. We continue with RuPaul, Drag Race UK versus the World. Which is quite enjoying. Quite now. fun. Yeah. Quite fun. Yeah. I don't, I can't remember what RuPaul other, what RuPaul Drag Race, what platform that's now on. Is it Paramount or something? Or I know it's on MTV. Right. I don't know what else. So mm. we've not been watching that. No. The American one. Um, but I'm quite satisfied with the UK yeah. one. Yeah. Thank you. UK versus Lovely. the world. We watched the old black and white movie, The Ghost Train. God, it's so annoying. Yeah. I like the ending. Yeah, the end, the end, the is end good. section is good, but it's just got that bloody Arthur Askey in it. The denouement is is really good, and I I have no idea that I've always loved the movie, but I've always found Arthur Askey annoying. Oh God, it's so annoying. Um, and I sort of thought that maybe they had I didn't know it had been written actually as a comic ghost piece. Um, by the guy who uh, the old guy in in Dad's Army. Um, can't remember his name now. Arnold something, I think. But anyway, it, it was... I've always loved it, but his character has always annoyed yeah, me. It's so annoying. And there isn't... I mean, something he does sort of partially redeem himself at the end by doing something, by honking the horn, basically, doesn't he? But there's no, there's no reason why you would like that character. Um, it's quite odd. But I think you have to think of the time it was filmed. It was Absolutely. 1941, so it was during the war. Mm -hmm. World War Two, so it was a piece which was obviously about um, infiltration of Nazi sympathisers in the UK, yeah, um, <clears throat> and how you know everybody can do their bit, and um, even in these dark times, you can push through and defeat the enemy, blah blah blah, and the British stiff upper lip and all of that. And yes, we haven't got any tea, but we'll crack on anyway. <laughs> yes. Oh no, there's nothing to eat. Oh well, we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll and just make do with some dry cardboard. <laughs> and some hot water. <laughs> oh look, it tastes better than tea. Mm. Marvellous. Oh, this cardboard's even tastier than a biscuit. <laughs> but, you know, it was all of that. And, and there were a series of films that were designed to... G people are oh absolutely and, you know, with a little bit of propaganda thrown in there as absolutely. well and you can kind of see that and I guess uh, I guess Arthur Askey was the comic relief I mean he was big yeah and yeah. he was a well loved comic absolutely um, and I guess they threw him in in buckets full in that film didn't they they you know, yeah they really overdid his part yeah yeah. Um, you know, but we only saw glimpses of serious bits from him where there were moments of jeopardy. Mm, mm. But just annoying. But the ending, I mean, with her, the the um, the weird woman at the end who turns out to be one of the Nazi sympathisers, her acting was quite mysterious and engaging well uh, it, I think it's it? I think it's very well directed and very well lit and there are moments throughout where you get that um, you just get a single face on the screen and they are portraying fear or or shock and I think that is done incredibly well I mean it was, I think it was quite a high budget film well you've for, got that beautiful, those days. you've got that beautiful glow of the black and white yeah. When, you know, I mean, some of the scenes were a little overlit and a bit overexposed, I noticed as well. And also you have scenes where they, they light one lamp on the wall here, gas lamp on the wall here, and all the others light up at the same time. I did also notice when they said, oh, oh goodness me, the lights have gone out. What are we going to do? And then the next scene, everything was fully lit again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, what happened to the lights? I mean, continuity in, in quite a lot of sort of older films doesn't sort of follow through. I think it became something quite, quite big, really, in the sort of 70s and 80s and from then on, and making sure that things were historically correct. And, of course, you still get things now where, you know, that something is set in Roman times and there's a red race car going along in the background or something. But, 
yeah, continuity is much stronger now than it used to be. Why are you looking at me like that? A red race car going in the background. What film's that then? Um, is it Quo Vardis? Is Quo, Quo which is the one which has ben got Hur. Uh, Ben Hur? Ben Hur. Really? Yeah, in the chariot scene, oh. there, there's a red race car that goes uh, along in the background. So, yeah. Lovely. Thank you for that. But there are, you know, there's time quite to a go lot now. of those Shh, things. Oh, is it time to go? Time to say goodbye. Oh, We've been on here far too long taking up these good people's time. <laughs> But I would like to see a version of The Ghost Train Remade. done as a serious thing because I think the story is really, really it good. It is a very good story. It's very a great good story. story. Yeah. It sweeps you along whilst mm. annoying the hell out of you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So thank you, bloody thank you for watching yet again another episode of Sunday Chat. Yes. Time to say goodbye now. And time to say bananas too. Bananas. Mm. Tits and bums. <laughs> bananas, tits and bums. There we are. Frozen tits and bums. Yeah. Oh, you a I'm bit feeling cold. a little bit cold little now, bit Paul, seeing as you've made me turn the heating off. Well, no, I didn't make you turn it off. Yes. I turned it off. I didn't give you a choice of turning it well, back I'm gonna on. I'm going to have to get my electric heater out. Yes, you get your stage. electric heater out. Yeah. I've got to go upstairs and edit this now. Well, we've got to do some... And more filming. Instant pot cooking. And more recipes. Mm. And more filming. We're just stuck in a filming loop. Mm. <laughs> but we love it, really. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye. Take care. Toodle pip au revoir. See you next week. See you next week. See you in the week, actually. We're going to see you for more cookery. Oh, yeah, cookery. Yeah. Bye. Bye. What's coming up? Bye. Oh, yes. Got to wait and see. Something with mushrooms. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.